Thank you. Uh, so I'm uh, really excited and nervous to be here talking to you guys about my, my passion and my story. And I wanted to start with a little bit of background on myself. Um, I, I travel a lot. Uh, I actually I live in Iowa, and I commute out here to, uh, to work every week. So I'm also uh, kind of a health nut. Um, I like to run a lot. I, you, I'm a vegan. I like to track my health progress uh, and improve it all the time. I consume a lot of media, and I do a lot of that media consumption with my wife and three boys, who are hopefully watching live back home right now. Hey, guys. Um, and in all of these activities, uh, I, I'm realizing that I'm producing so much data. Um, and uh, like with the travel stuff, I'm, I'm geotagging all my tweets and all my photos. I'm using uh, Foursquare, and I have Google Latitude ambiently tracking everything. Um, I put all my runs up on RunKeeper, and if you go there, it's all public. You'll find out I'm very slow. Uh, <laughs> You also, uh, I, I wear this body media device, you know, that, that's tracking my activity and my sleep patterns all the time uh, that I want to use to, like, mash up with all, all my stuff and see, see how my health improves over time. And uh, all of this, all the media that I'm consuming with my family tells a story about how we spend time together and uh, what kinds of interests we have together and how we're growing. Um, and this, this stuff, it, it tells a story. All this data tells a story. But what's important about this is that it's not about the data. And I've come to realize, as a developer, I get very excited about this data. But when I step back and I think about this as, as a dreamer, what I'm really excited about is that this is about life. And this is about life in sort of our modern times. Um, so in my sort of research and study over the years of this relationship between data and life, I came across uh, a, an amazing story, historical story, uh, about Dihak, the founder of Visa. And, the, and there's a lot of similarities to what's going on today and what happened you know, 30 plus years ago when credit cards were first forming. And uh, it's, it's something he said really resonates with me uh, about this relationship. And it's that life is, is defined by the ability to receive to utilize, store, transform, and transmit information. And this is very important in that as a technology industry, we're always talking about all of these different pieces. But so often, we forget that when you step back, the bigger picture, when you put them together, we are changing how people live. We are creating new ways to live. And that that excitement about the future and about how things are going to change and improve all the time has been part of me since I was a little kid. I was tearing apart appliances in my home and, you know, breaking equipment on the farm, and uh, my parents weren't always so happy about that, but um, it, it, it taught me something as I explored how things worked that technology has the potential to help us connect and help us share and help us grow in our lives. So... Um, Ten years ago, uh, in my, um, as I love to play with technology all the time, I saw a pattern happening that, that bothered me, and that technology was being used to actually limit and control and, and block how people were communicating, particularly with instant messaging. Uh, it, 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 was a, it was a way of keeping people inside of a box, and that's not how technology is supposed to be used. That's not helping us connect, share, and grow. So I started a project uh, called Jabber, and I built XMPP. And, and over the years, um, it, it's an open project. It was all free. And that technology, that, since it was open, was baked into so many applications and so many services worldwide that it has improved the way that over a billion people communicate. And uh, many of you have used it, and you may not even know it, because it's baked into so many different things now. Um, which has been very exciting, and I'm very proud to have you know, been a part of, of the internet evolving. So over the last 10 years, another pattern that I've seen happening is data. And this, um, this emergence of big data, and this talk about all this data, and all the social data that I'm sharing on all these different platforms, I, I'm, I'm, it's starting to weigh heavily on me again. That there's, a, there's a problem here. And this problem is that my data is somewhere else. That, and, and you think about it when you talk about all of your data out there. You say it's on there, it's over there, it's in there. There, somewhere, away from you. 
And that's, that's not the way it's supposed to be. And people say, oh, well, there's, there's APIs to this, this data. I, I, don't, I don't buy that APIs are, are actually the right thing, because any API that has a terms of service is a chokehold. It's a control point. It's a way to say no to something in some way. So APIs, while it's the data trying to get out and trying to be free, there's always some way that it's being controlled. There's always some limit, something that a developer can't do. Some imagine, you know, their imagination is being bounded in some way. So it's controlling the developers what they want to do for me, and it's controlling what I want to do with my data. And so we find ourselves asking these questions. Where is that data? Who has access to it? What's happening to it? How is it being used? How much is there? And these are common questions we're asking as an industry. And I believe that the right step forward and the, the step I'm trying to make is that there is no wall, there's no barrier, that my data should be with me, should be part of me, and there shouldn't be any limitations or controls around what I do with my data. And we, we hear this. It's not just me saying this. You know, we, we hear Twitter saying, yes, people own their own data, and they can have a copy of it. Um, and everybody in the industry is sort of agreeing with that. Of course, you can't say no to that. But what's important here is that you have to take the next step. You need to have a home for your data. And I'm trying aggressively to define this home both in the best software, the best technology, and the best legal terms, such that this home is yours, that you own, that you control. And this home for your data, this ability for you to have it, and to share it out is going to transform, I think, our industry over the next 10 years. There's going to be this tectonic shift as everything sort of reshapes and recenters itself around people, around individuals, and around the, the mountains of data that they have. Um, and when I say a mountain of data, you know, everybody's talking about big data. This isn't, this isn't big data. This is going to be the era of small data, of my data. That is the most important data to me. So when we look at sort of the stack that might become out of this. At the bottom of the stack here, at the foundation, isn't a company, it isn't a brand. It's us. It's a person. Every person decides who they trust and what has access to their data and their life. So as much as I love talking about my vision um, and, and how this might evolve and might become, I. I like to do things. I, I like to write code every day. Uh, I like to, to build around this thing. And work has been underway on this progress. Uh, we've, uh, myself and a group of friends, started a company earlier this year called Singly, headquarters here in the mission. Uh, we assembled, um, we didn't assemble, I mean, it came to us throughout the world, amazing uh, team of, of talented people. Um, you know, People like Matt Zimmerman, who, who left being the CTO of Canonical and Ubuntu to come join us. You know, one of the biggest open projects in the world because he believed that this, this is an important thing to do, uh, an important system that needs to be open and built. And we work together, we code together every day as a family building toward this, this vision. And I, I'm really excited today to say that we've reached our first milestone. What we're announcing today is that developers, early access for developers to come and try this out, uh, to work and design and build things in such a way that the person comes first. So, and to, to build on top of a data home. And I'm going to show you guys a, a quick little video of some features. Uh, underlying all of this stuff um, is the open source project that's driving all this, that's collecting all of a person's data from all the different social networks, bringing it into one place. And as you can see here, this is what developers can build on top of it. Uh, we have merged and deduped and all of the contacts and friends from all the different networks. We have full search and indexing built into it. We have uh, all of your photos that you've shared out, all of the links that you're receiving that we're going out and fetching and indexing. Um, and developers can just, they don't need to know anything other than a little bit of HTML and JavaScript to be able to create these experiences. That's all these things are. It's your data in your home where the developers are creating things that you bring in. You don't have to shuttle your data anywhere else. You get to bring in and experience your data yourself. And what's awesome is that it's not just us. You know, this is a, an open developer movement. We have contributors and advocates worldwide helping us build this, helping, build, helping have built that, what you saw. And it, it's, it's such a, everybody believes in this because 
what we're trying to do is we're trying to enable every, everybody out there who's a creator, an artist, uh, the, all the imagineers of the world with any desire to reach people and to affect their lives, a way to do that, a way to take all of these bits of data and do something important for people. Um, so we're, we're asking everybody to help us write this story. It's not just about us. It's about you. It's about the story of our lives. It's about our families and our communities. And it's about the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Thank you very much.